You know, the touched. Yes, they have weird deformities and afflictions. They're unhappy. Well, whatever they are, I think they're a gold mine. James, Hugo is, if nothing else, having fun, though I suspect that his motives aren't purely, you know, for his own satisfaction, I guess you'd say. Um, what do you think that he wants in life? Like, who is, you know, where is he coming from? Is he the second son? Is he, you know, what's going on there? I mean, that's a big question. And one I would, I think I'll be better suited to answer once we finish the next six, because we've had tantalizing hints at Hugo's backstory with his father and the sort of the dubious death of his brother and whether he was involved. Um, he certainly suffers from second son syndrome and his his brother was obviously a, a shining light and the apple of his father's eye. Um, Masson thinks that, that the reason why um, Hugo's father went has gone mad and, and lost his, unfortunately lost his mind is because of his brother's death. So there's a huge part of the family history to unpack, which we haven't, we've only really hinted at. And I'm sure that will shed light on Hugo's journey. There is bigger things going on in Hugo's world, but actually I think probably um, without going into that sort of therapy space, he, in the in the instant, first instance, he is just about self-serving, satisfying his own you know neat insatiable needs like he just is a consumer of everything everything being you know booze drugs men women bodies he just w- takes what he wants and he can get away with it because of his privilege and you know he doesn't have to account for anything or anyone so um it is a delight to play him in that respect because i think we all probably sort of we all speculate what that must be like to just be who you want to be and do what you want um but i imagine that can't last forever and i'm sure hugo's gonna you know, face some sort of repercussions <laughs> along the way. Yeah, it's also a little like, you know, being 20, 30 something and being into that is one thing. Being 60 something is, is a little gross. Also, <laughs> you know, yeah. there's a little different yeah. vibe happening. Also, you know, he's using the members of the touched as sex workers who can offer, you know, a little something extra. Um, that in some ways is an opportunity for them, but it also is pretty exploitative. You know, what do you sort of think about the line <laughs> there between uh, who's really screwing who, I guess? This is why the writing and the, uh, you know, this is why the characters and just the general show as, as a whole are so intriguing for actors is because they don't answer all the questions. They are representative of of humanity and all the conflicts and mess that come with, you know, human beings in general. Um, Hugo isn't the sort of fop, the stock character. He is, um, I mean, I think there is a conscience in there and I hope that we might, you know, explore that. I don't think that he's, he's obviously not a villain by any means. Um, his relationship with the touch is complicated because on the one hand, he's one of the very few people who actually recognise that their contribution to society might be a positive one. I mean, it's very messy because he's grooming them and he's exploiting them and he is, as you say, ultimately hiring them as, as sex workers. Having said that, he's, fi- he's providing them with sanctuary. He's paying them a salary um, of all the kind of different, you know, there's, there's Amalia in the orphanage, but then the other w- um, various ways in which they're treated. Hugo's um, is nowhere near the worst if you think about, you know, Haig and, um, you know, that whole storyline. So it is complicated. Um, I think that that possibly that choice he's made to engage with the touched and um, exploit them protect them, whatever you might want to call it, I think will will be the sort of heart of his journey. I mean, one thing we see, especially in his relationship with Augie, and this is uh, where we'll start with you, Tom, is that like when you're, when they're actually friends, um, that maybe he's willing to stand for someone and to help someone and, and you know, all this sort of stuff. Um, Tom, do you have a sense of how these guys became friends? Is it just like, well, we've known each other since we were five, so we're friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I think there's definitely an element of that, but having your friend from school who, if you if you met them now, you maybe wouldn't hit it off or, or find you had anything in common whatsoever, but because they've gone through so much shared history together, and potentially, and this is something that we discussed right early on, shared trauma in their past, um, that they have come to a place where they find each other's company reassuring and comforting, and they care deeply about each other. And I think it's it's interesting in so much that um, Oggy could be someone who's just utterly outraged and horrified by the way, as, as you point out, Hugo chooses to potentially exploit the touched. And at the same time, Hugo could get a great dark devious pleasure out of the fact that Oggy is squirming so much. But the truth is a lot more complicated in that, in so much that Oggy will 
there's a little bit of Oggy that, although he does appear befuddled and bewildered, he is a little bit seduced by Hugo and what Hugo has to offer. And when Hugo suggests in episode three that that there might be a salary for him, it's like the whole like, oh, that's so loose, a salary. Even that like sort of something that that for Oggy, he's not quite as horrified as perhaps you you might hope he would be. And likewise, when Hugo is making him uncomfortable, Hugo doesn't revel in that quite as much. He feels bad for his friend and he cares about him. So yeah, they have a they 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 definitely get something from one another. Yeah, they can sort of like uh complete each other a little bit. You know, yeah. once he finds out that the Tom is touched, like maybe Hugo will say, like, oh well, maybe I should think about, you know, the touch differently, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Speaking of that. Um, a lot of the members of the touch are women, but Augie is one of the exceptions um, of, you know, a, a man that's part of this, of the subculture. I don't know what you'd call it. The touch, the numbers. How do you think Augie sort of got it? Like, is it just, he's such a sensitive guy. Like, like why do you think he was chosen as it were? That's the interesting thing. And I think that's something he's wrestling with as well, because as he says to Penance in episode two, like, isn't this a feminine trait? And I think like he's wrestling with this idea of why has this happened to me? Because to all intents and purposes, Augie is a white privileged upper class man. You know, it's, it's, and this is something that generally has happened to the people who are oppressed in society and the marginalized. Um, and so, yeah, he's he, he's wrestling with that himself. Why did this happen to me? And obviously there's the the clearer arguments that he is his sister is more powerful than him. And though he comes from a higher class, he's very much a, a bullied, meek um, man who's embarrassed and uncomfortable in his own skin and unable to speak for himself despite the privilege that he comes from. Um, but there's definitely more to it as to why Oggy has been um, touched and he's wrestling with that as much as hopefully the audience will. His power is also that he can sort of inhabit a bird. <laughs> like he can, he can sort of control birds. He can control um, them, he can see through their eyes. Yeah, he can, <laughs> birds, James, anything you, can birds. <laughs> Well, James, you can weigh in on this too, or Tom. Um, mm -hmm. Is, how useful is that power? Like how, how would I use it in this world today? <laughs> well, the, bird, the bird's power, well, that's, I think that's the thing about it. It's that you, Oggy doesn't really know as we come to meet him he is learning about the power what it means in the first episode he's just wondering why birds are following him and then as, as it progresses you're going to see more and more what he's capable of with this power um I mean what you do with it now it would be great for spying I guess uh, like I mean, if you're into spying <laughs> yeah if you're into spying uh, you could what, like poop on your enemies that, yeah, you know that's a yeah. small victory I guess yes of course <laughs> There's a harmony to our world that's worth preserving. The touched are not a threat, yet you seem determined to prove that they are. The church, the purists, they're a danger to us. We have enemies we don't know about yet. <laughs>